you were lucky in high school, then one of your teachers would have taught you about how informational texts are written. Other names for informational texts are non-fiction or expository texts. They're all the same thing. I'm going to describe to you the five most common ways these texts are structured. You might be thinking, ah, who cares about the literacy? Just give me the science. But if you understand these five structures, they'll make you a more efficient learner because the vast majority of texts and remember, the modern definition of texts include lectures, books, websites, YouTube clips and so on. You'll come across at university are informational texts. It'll make your life easier in lectures and tutorials and when you're studying because you will understand the meta language and know the best ways to represent and organise that information to make you a more efficient learner. But wait, there's more. If you can master identifying these five text structures and know the best way to summarise them, then you can teach this lifelong learning skill to your students. Help yourself and your future students become information savvy, independent learners. In your course notes you'll find the picture I'm describing and incidentally I'm using list and describe now to talk about each text structure. List and describe is where an author will list and or describe the features of something. For example, they might be describing a reef ecosystem or the features of a planet. They'll use adjectives to describe or use a comma separated list to describe the features. Traditionally we'd summarise this text structure as a bulleted list with headings and subheadings but as you can see in the icon an alternative way is using a web. It's a matter of preference which one you use. Problem solution is where the author presents a problem and then provides the solution or solutions. You can also think of this as question and answer. But how does the water get back into the clouds? Through the process of evaporation. A scientific hypothesis is also in the problem solution format, where the hypothesis is the problem and the conclusion is the solution. Order and sequence is where the author presents a series of interrelated events, which sometimes occur in chronological order. Processes such as chemical reactions or a chain of chemical reactions have this structure. Life cycles also have this structure, but note how cycles have no end or beginning, while processes do. The way you draw these would therefore be different, but in each case you'd use an arrow to link together the sequence. Compare and contrast is where an author looks at similarities and differences between two or more things. They might use words such as both when describing similarities, or however when describing differences. For example, you could compare and contrast the cat and the dog, or Venus and Mars. The most common visual way to represent this is by a Venn diagram, where similarities go in the overlapping segment in the middle, and the differences go in the respective outer portions. Cause and effect is the last structure. This is where an event, the cause, has an impact, the effect. For example, heat from the sun, the cause, made my ice cream melt, the effect. The most common way to summarise this is with an arrow between your cause and effect. Just be aware for more complex phenomena like World War II, there could be multiple causes and multiple effects. So next time you're in a lecture or watching the pre-laboratory material or reading some text, think to yourself, how is this text structured? Pick your summarising tool and go ahead and take the best notes of your life. Good luck and enjoy.